General Michael Flynn's downfall was swift, efficient, and clean, perhaps too clean. In just weeks, a major critic of the foreign policy establishment was politically obliterated, thanks in part to U.S. intelligence monitoring his private conversations. Is Flynn's rapid fall evidence that official Washington is trying to undermine the president? That may be a rhetorical question. Fox News senior political analyst Britt Hume joins us now. Britt, thanks for coming on. So the first question is not how did this happen, but I just want to get to the outcome and your assessment of it. Was Flynn the right guy for this job in the first place, politics aside? I think... Yeah, I think two things are true here, Tucker. One is that uh, the intelligence agencies apparently were bent on uh, undermining him and did so by the leaks that you described and tried to explain to your first guests. And and I think it is also true that he probably wasn't the best fit for this job. Uh, right. Mike Flynn is a very strongly opinionated guy with passionate views and beliefs. Uh, and that has normally not been the characteristic of the National Security Advisor whose job it is principally to kind of organize and collate the viewpoints coming out of the agencies uh, for the president to make decisions based on. And his job, his job is then to neutrally present those views to the president. Uh, and, right. you know, some people have been criticized almost for doing that too well. I mean, Donald Rumsfeld didn't like Condoleezza Rice's performance as the national security advisor because she, she tried to work everything out and get it all settled between the, the differing parties so the president wouldn't have to make the call. He, you know, he thought that she should, that she should uh, let things be had out in front of the president. But that aside, right. the job is to get objectively as possible accurate information to the president, uh, representing all viewpoints so that he can decide. When you present inaccurate information, as he did in the case of what he told the vice president, whether he was intentionally lying or not is almost beside the point. You have fallen down on the job. And, you know, you, he probably needs someone with a more neutral temperament than Mike Flynn had. He's right. a decorated intelligence officer. He enjoys wide respect. But that doesn't mean he's the right man for this job. Well, that's, that's right. He may have been temperamentally unsuited for it. But it is sort of an ominous precedent, whatever you think of Flynn specifically, that the agencies, particularly the intelligence agencies, can undo someone using data gathered in surveillance. I mean, that, that has got to put the fear of God into everybody serving in the executive branch. The CIA could, could crush me. Well, absolutely. And what, a, yeah, and what looks like it probably happened here, Tucker, was that they're, they're eavesdropping on the Russian ambassador, and they pick up right. his conversation or conversations with Mike Flynn. They now are in possession, through classified uh, information, of very sensitive information on two counts. One is that the information itself is classified and having it get out might compromise sources and methods. And the second is that they've got information that they probably shouldn't have or shouldn't have been, shouldn't be, should be very careful with about the private conversations of a United States citizen. So that information is doubly deserving of the kind of protections that intelligence agencies are used to providing, and it leaked out. That may be a crime. So, you know, the question then becomes, you know, was Mike Flynn more sinned against than sinning? And I think that, it, right. as, we, as we talk here tonight, Tucker, that's kind of an open question. It is. But, and it raises the larger question that many people seem to be asking all of a sudden. Can you possibly get a handle on a federal government that doesn't want you to run it? I mean, that's the question that the president may be asking himself. If you have all these permanent bureaucrats, some of them smart, knowledgeable, talented, who don't want your foreign policy, reject your views, can you actually effectuate your views? Yeah, can you govern? I, I, that's a, and I yeah. think that is a very good question and one that I'm sure they're worried about in the White House. There was an amazing story I saw, and I guess it was the Washington Post the other day, that was talking about uh, the difficulty the president might be having in staffing the National Security Council, which, and the National Security Council staff, which is, a, is, be, is morphed into this great big agency, relying on people who are drawn from other agencies around the government who come, you know, they're, they're, they're borrowed to work on the, on the NSC. And it said that it said the story said that some of these people asked to be returned to their the agencies where they came from because they didn't want to work for Donald Trump for President Trump. Well, who did yeah. they think they'd be working for when they went back to their agencies? Right. Well, that gives you an idea right. of the mindset, doesn't it? <laughs> that these people are going to go back to the agency where they could merrily try to do all they could to torpedo the administration. And exactly. I, I look at the EPA and some of these other agencies. You got to know, Tucker, that this is going to be going on, and that and that oh. running this government. And taking it in a new direction is going to be about the hardest thing Donald Trump and maybe any recent administration has ever tried to do because the resistance is inside the government and outside. It's unbelievable. Brit Hume, thank you for that. As always, the perspective. We appreciate it. You bet.